growing enormously over the past few years. And with it, a new generation of consumers who are more interested to understand what is it that we're applying to our skin? What are the ingredients? And more importantly, what will it do for my skin? Niacinamide, a trending in ingredient over the past few years. On Google, you would see that it has as high as 13 million hits. Now the question is, is it just hype or does it provide hope? Now niacinamide is far from a newly discovered ingredient and it wasn't always linked to skincare or beauty. Let's go back to the start of the 20th century when niacinamide was first isolated from rice bran and yeast. In 1927, Joseph Goldberger, a renowned epidemiologist, discovered that dietary supplementation with niacin from corn and dried yeast was sufficient to cure pellagra, a disease presenting with the four Ds, dermatitis, diarrhea, dementia, and death. It was only in the 1937 that nicotinic acid and its derivatives, including niacinamide, was shown to be the PP factor, or pellagra preventive. Fast forward today, and niacinamide has been incorporated into cleansers, toners, creams, serums, you name it. A crowd favorite. Now what is it? Niacinamide is part of the B-complex family of vitamins. It is a water-soluble and active form of niacin, or vitamin B3. What is it for? Dubbed the jack of all trades, here are the A to F's of niacinamide's uses. A. Antioxidant. Now, antioxidants are compounds produced in the body, and they're found in food that help defend cells from damage caused by potentially harmful molecules known as free radicals. B. Barrier. It improves the skin barrier function particularly by increasing production of ceramides as much as five times. Remember my brick wall analogy from the previous episode? Yes, niacinamide increases ceramides. It also reduces the release of water from the skin to the environment, thus improving the moisture content of the skin. C, color yellow. It decreases the yellowing of the skin through its antioxidant capabilities. Another C, sebaceous. Niacinamide regulates sebum production. D, dark spots. It actually reduces melanosome transfer from melanocytes to the surrounding keratinocytes, which is why it is important in brightening or reducing pigmentation. E, erythema and blotchiness. By increasing your barrier function, this can actually result in less irritation when the skin encounters environmental insults, less redness. F, fine lines and wrinkles. By increasing your dermal collagen and protein production, this actually reduces those fine lines and aging. That's a lot, which is why it is somewhat a jack of all traits. But the more important question is, will it deliver? The father of cosmeceuticals, Kligman, actually defined three key questions that need to be addressed when evaluating the effectiveness of a cosmeceutical. One, permeability. Will it cross the skin barrier and go to the deeper layers of the skin and produce its effect? Two, mechanism. Does the active ingredient have a known mechanism of action in the target cell or tissue in the skin? And three, clinical effect. Are there clinical trials to show that it does produce the effect that is desired? The great thing about niacinamide is that it is one of the most widely studied ingredients over the years and thus gets a check in all three categories. Now, is it safe? Now, certain studies have shown that niacinamide produced no stinging at concentrations up to 10%. Use tests also produce no irritation at concentrations up to 5%. Another study also showed 21-day cumulative irritation tests at concentrations up to 5% were 
with no irritancy. Therefore, niacinamide would be a safe bet. In terms of available formulations, you can find them in creams, serums, and even lotions. Now, the serums may even go from around 5 to 10% concentration, while others wouldn't indicate how high the concentration is. Now, who is it for? Because of its proven beneficial effects, niacinamide would be a good choice for people with problems in their skin barrier, such as those with acne-prone skin, aging skin, as well as those with pigmentary disorders. Hopefully, after this episode, you'll be able to make smarter choices for your skin. But remember, when in doubt, ask your derma. Thanks for listening. See you next time. Don't forget to subscribe on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube 